Welcome to Smacky's Garage. Today we're going to be working on the Factory 5 GTM chassis wiring. The chassis wiring is going to be run by an infinity box system, which is going to be mounted in three different locations on the vehicle. There's going to be one main master cell where all the inputs are coming in, and then it's going to send the outputs to the remote locations in the front of the vehicle and in the rear of the vehicle to control different systems. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to install it, we're going to install the ignition wiring with it, and including the ignition, and we're going to see if we can get it to work so that we can kick the engine over. So let's go ahead, let's jump into it. Let's talk a little bit about what the Infinity Box is. So this here is the Infinity Box power cell system. So it has a ma one master cell, it has two different power cells. And what it's supposed to do, you're supposed to be able to control a lot of the systems in your vehicle with it. And it's great for people that are looking at building old hot rods that don't have wiring, that want to add some sort of smarts to it, or some simple system that allows you to customize it, expand it, and do whatever you want without having to add more wiring over time. You can see on the input side, there is a lot of different wires that we're gonna to have to connect up. So this is good if we're starting to look at just at adding more switches or more controls to the vehicle in the long term. Each one of these power cells is gonna be backed up by uh, 60 amp fuses. Actually, they're in parallel, so 120 amps total, 60 amps per side. Not 100% sure on that, but we're not gonna be running anything that big. And if we are, we're probably gonna be running a, um, a relay system on it. So the nice thing about the system is it can be mounted in different locations. So for the master cell, the plan is actually to mount this master cell in the front of the car, by the dash, by where I'm gonna be sitting, and then have the two different power cells be located in different locations. So one power cell, so this one's gonna be located in the engine compartment, which is gonna be in charge of essentially letting the vehicle know when it needs to hit the starter on, when you need to hit the ignition. It's also gonna be able to do the tail lights, the rear lights of the car, blinkers, the front system, which I'm gonna be putting in front of the passenger side dash compartment. That's gonna be mainly used for systems like maybe controlling the vintage air that's in the car, as well as looking at controlling the headlights, the blinkers, the fans if we want on the vehicle. So far while I've been playing with this system, the, the Infinity Box, I really liked it because it's simple enough to look at you know, if you put these two wires together, here's how the ignition turns on. So with that said, let's go ahead and let's start mounting the Infinity Box to the car. Now don't get intimidated by the amount of wiring. I think about half of them are probably grounds. So I'm gonna put this here, end up riveting it down and installing it. All right, so with that power cell installed, now we're gonna go ahead and run all the cabling, so including the battery cables, through the center of the chassis up, and you can see the switch installed there. We'll also install the fuses and the bus on the other side of that to get power to the back. So let's go ahead and let's mount the fuse block, and then we're gonna end up running all the cables. All right, so we got the panel in. Took a little bit of screwing with it with the parking brake to get it to fit. I need to get shorter screws. 
here because these are a little bit long and I didn't want them sticking out on the other side where the positive battery leads are gonna be. All right, so I'm gonna run all the power cell wires from the back of the car to the front of the car, and then I'm gonna look at what the right length of the battery cables need to be before they get installed. So it's really nice to work in a car that doesn't have a body on it. I'm able to access absolutely everything I need to get to and route the wires without having to get underneath it. So this is my first time making battery cables and having the right tools made it really easy to do. Just some simple cutters that were meant for cutting battery cable made it cut through like butter. And by getting the right crimpers, everything went together nice and smoothly. Now I should be able to attach those positive wires. Battery cable is run. So I can hook this up to the battery cable and then see if everything's working. So of course I don't have the right size crimper to crimp a four gauge wire that needs to run from there to that bus. So I'm gonna have to run out and grab that. But before I'm doing that, I can put in the ignition switch as well as the push to start switch. This is gonna be my temporary dash for right now, just until I figure out where I want to mount it. This way I can get everything wired up, make sure everything works correctly, and then cut the wires to length later. So let's go ahead and I'm going to end up drilling these in. Not bad for a temporary Ignition and push the start switch. So I can decide how I'm going to wire this up, but you know, simple enough that I should be able to just put it somewhere in the car. All right, so the battery goes up here in the front and to ground it, I need to drill a hole, a three eighths hole in that bracket down there. So I need to find some way to get down there and make that work. battery somehow needs to fit in there. So I'm guessing these are all have to be loosened and removed to get the battery in. It's quite tight in there. That is the worst fitting battery. <laughs> oh, actually, oh, the battery fits in fine. It's just, it's not easy to get in and out. Okay, so I decided to swap the battery around so that positive terminals in the front, negatives in the back. If the battery were to move at all, this way that positive terminal, terminal won't actually hit anything in front where it was so close in the back to the aluminum or the steel back there. I didn't want to take any chance with it shorting out because the, the negative terminal is going to be attached to there. So if the positive were to hit that, it would indeed short out and could cause a fire or explode. So Swapping them around. To do this correctly, I need to get a longer ground strap, which I don't have right now. So that has to be ordered this week. But now that all these are connected, the power wires are run, I should be able to get it one step closer to hitting the ignition. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna tighten everything up in there. Other than this side, because I don't have the right crimper right now. I'm also not cutting these wires on purpose because I wanna make sure everything's in the right place before and everything works before I cut them or else I don't wanna to have to get other wires because these wires are terminated specially on the end. So, all right, well, next up. All right, so I decided to run the ignition wires and to do that, I need to get in here. Okay, so ignition, you can see it's in place. So looking for the ignition, it's white with blue. The starter is white with yellow. So white with blue, ignition. White with yellow, starter. Got those. Now I need some grounds. Ignition, so I'll put the ignition on. 
put the battery on and they short, should turn on the light. And when I push the push to start button, it should turn on that. So we need some terminals for this side. I need crimpers for the side. So the way that this works is, you know, I'm running much smaller wires through this because I'm not actually running a lot of current through it. It's just sensing if it is open or closed. And then it's using the computer down there for the brain to essentially send the signals back to the engine behind me. So now with this all set up, you know, I might as well plug those in and then see if I can actually get some power to it to see if the switches are working. So let's go ahead and do that. So in the spirit of getting this thing working, I actually have a old Radio Shack power supply down there that's 12 volts that I should be able to power the entire system with. So right now the battery is still not connected. I'm running it directly to the computer system off of the bus back there and then ground it into the system. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to turn this on and see what happens. Okay, we have power. That's some good news. Some lights up here. Ignition key up here, so all right, everything should be off. Yep. Now turn the key on. Let's see. Yep. There's ignition light, so the ignition relay is on. And then the push to start. So hold it down for three seconds. One, two, three. All right, so we made some pretty decent progress on the car. I wanted to get the battery and everything hooked up, but since I don't have a four gauge crimper and I don't have the right length braided line right now with the braided power cable ground strap to go to the chassis, I'm not gonna risk it. We're gonna have to end up trying to start it next week. But what we were able to do today is, I mean, we showed that by turning the key on, the ignition light comes on, by turning the start, by pushing the start button, the starter turns on or the starter light turns on. So we're one step closer. So I guess I can now start looking at kind of wrapping up some of the wires, cutting them to the right length. I have a bunch of the correct hardware coming. So the right terminal sizes, the, I needed different crimpers. So now that those are on the way, should be good. Thanks for tuning in to Smacky's Garage. I'll see you next time.